Hey there, marketers. Let's take a quick look at the Rapid Miner software interface. We'll just skim the surface a little bit. Now, we'll become more familiar with what each part of the software does as we get more familiar with using it. So when you first open up Rapid Miner and start a blank new process, you'll see something like this. Of course, it'll be blank here. This is our process workspace where we actually build out the workflow that we're constructing in Rapid Miner. Things typically work from left to right. In other words, things that happen on the left will then be connected to things that move towards the right by virtue of these little connector lines that we will construct and data and analysis will flow and actually generate our results. These little boxes here have a variety of different colors with their labels and names of what they are on top are called operators. Operators can be thought of as sort of like little miniature programs that do specific steps in the data analysis process. So if we're looking for a particular operator, we can find them here over in the bottom left-hand corner. You could search things for like report. You could search things for like analyze. You could search things like um, recode and so, so on. And even notably down here, we can get more operators from the marketplace. So as we get more advanced, it actually turns out there's an entire development community that makes a bunch of handy dandy operators that solve specific problems for us uh, that we can often get for free. Sometimes there's, they're charged. We, of course, don't use any charged ones here in class. In your upper left-hand corner here is the repository. This is where you will find pre-existing examples of data sets and process files where things have already been constructed. So we have training resources and samples, for example, and also where you can save your process files in such as like your local repository. On the upper right hand side here, we see something that says parameters. Notice as I click from one of these operator boxes to the other, the parameter changes. Each one of the operators that we might use in Rapid Miner often requires a lot of specific individualized settings. Sure, sometimes the defaults are just fine, but in other cases we have to sort of tune and program exactly how a particular operator is supposed to function so that it works correctly for us. That's where we tailor those things. We toggle them and adjust those settings in the parameter interface. Finally, here in the bottom right is our help console. Quite useful. Although it can be a little difficult to parse and read at first because it uses some technical jargon, as we get more comfortable with Rapid Miner, the help menu is really insightful for telling us what a particular operator does. And importantly, it often tells you exactly what is required at minimum to make an operator work the way we want it to. And very importantly, at the very bottom, after you select an operator that you're using, there is usually a hyperlink to a little tutorial that actually shows you how that operator might work in practice on some other process. So sometimes it's best to learn by how something is actually being used, and we can see that there. Okay, we also have this little recommended operator menu. I don't use this too often. Um, it's sort of a wisdom of the crowds style thing where based on where you're at in a process, Rapid Miner actually sort of observes how other individuals and other users choose different operators. So it makes the implication that, hey, you might want to actually use one of these operators, the ones that you could be searching for on the left-hand side, in the next part of your sequence. Again, I don't particularly use them, but it could be useful for you. So in this particular quick example, I'm reading an Excel file from somewhere. I'm doing some data preparation and setting roles. We'll just ignore that for now. But what I'd like to do is actually conduct some analysis. I'd like to actually build a prediction model trying to predict how much someone's going to spend for my business based on a few facts about them. That information is stored inside this Excel file. Now, right now, you can see that I can I read the Excel file and I set the role of the data. And if I hit go, nothing happens. It says the final connection is miss missing. I can even hit the fix now button and it actually guesses that, hey, I bet you wanted me to connect the last thing to the results area. Okay, click go again. And notice that I'm no longer on the design tab, but I'm now here in the results interface. And here I'll see a series of tabs, in this case just one, showing me this is the exact data file that I read in from Excel. 
So in other words, it read in the Excel file and the coloration we'll learn about later of some of these columns indicates that that set role function worked correctly, meaning RapidMiner understands those columns to mean something special. If I go back to the design phase, I'll recall that I actually wanted to build a regression model, a simple linear response model. So if I go to my operators in the bottom left and type in regression, I see there's a whole bunch of different regression models, but I just want simple linear regression. And I can drag that here. So after my data has been imported and processed, it flows into my regression operator and outspit a model. Let's go ahead and run this one more time and see what happens. Notice I'm in results menu here. And notice that my tab is entirely different. That's because the nature of the output was entirely changed. It's now giving me a model output. And the coefficients for my recency, frequency, and monetary value, my predictors in the linear regression model, are here. These are the beta coefficients, or the parameters. And here's the rest of the standard set of results that you might get from a multiple linear regression model that you've done in other software programs like SPSS or Excel. So this little introduction has at least familiarized ourselves with the key components of the RapidMiner interface. As we move forward, we will learn a variety of different ways to make best use of this interface.